<laughs> Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you guys. Um, I want to introduce everybody. We got a lot of people up here. So uh, Jonathan Hickory, based on a true story, this is his life. <clears throat> We've got the uh, the hero of the story, his wife Stacy. <laughs> I'm Tim Searfoss. I'm the director of the film. You know who this guy is. <laughs> That's Ignacio Sterling. And then, uh, <clears throat> last but not least, we got Danny, who uh, helped me co-write co and co-produce the film. So uh, first off, I think we should start with, uh, with Jonathan. So Jonathan, tell us um, how true to life this story is, and um, tell us a little bit about it. Well, first of all, I wanted to um, tell everybody that w an announcement that I forgot to make in the beginning. We have some prayer team members in the back. So if anyone needs prayer, I know it's a powerful film, can invoke a lot of emotion. Uh, we do have some prayer team members back by the exit signs back here. Uh, so the question was, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> how true to the story, how the film is, and, you know, and that kind of thing. Yeah, so we really, I mean, Tim and Danny are the writers of the script. And uh, they did a fantastic job of really keeping the story very true to the book. And the true is the, the book is absolutely the true story. So um, I think, I mean, there were a few scenes that, uh, that they took some liberties with. We made Hollywood with. a little bit. But. <laughs> yeah, some liberties with. But yeah, the, I'd say like 95% of the, of the film is, is the way it really happened in real life. So I know that a lot of people want to hear um, from you, Stacy. So tell us a little bit from your perspective, you know, um, this journey <laughs> that you went on, you know, and, and where you're at now. Yeah, so after the book was written, we really had to make sure that we were following God's plan. And this is all God. This whole entire book, movie, it is all God. <laughs> And every person on this stage has, God has ordained them to be where they are. So I'm just going to stop there before I start crying. <laughs> I didn't watch the movie because I didn't want to make up, go everywhere. Anyway, um, this, this story for us is we live it every day of helping others. And we want to help as many first responders as possible. And... My role as wife for helping first responders, as for wives, um, it's it's every day, and there are so many first responders living this life, and they're living the lie that they can't talk to anyone, and we need to break that stigma, and I'm really hoping that this movie will do that for someone or lots of people. <laughs> that would be nice, but for wives, we just have a. We have a lot that we take at home from police officers of, or first responders of when they get home and they just, you know, they, sometimes they just give us a lot of their junk and we don't know what to do with it. So from, for, for me personally, it's really, it's really nice to help other women, other wives that are going through this, maybe not this exact story, but 
other things that uh, first responders are going through. So, what else do I need to talk about? <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. So, uh, I was just going to tell you. <laughs> Let me just share a little quick story, a uh, little anecdotal story behind the scenes of, of you know, making the movie. So uh, if you remember the scene where uh, <laughs> Ignacio is, um, is, is smashing out the garage, you know, it's an, it's an emotional scene. And Ignacio's a pretty awesome actor, as you can tell. <laughs> and uh, to, get, to get kind of in the, in the, in the spirit of the, <laughs> of the filming, he, uh, he, he goes outside and you know, he's like, okay, are you ready? He's like, yeah, we're ready. So. <laughs> He goes outside, and you know we're at someone's house. You know this is a real house. We're, we're borrowing it to film. You know, and um, he goes out, and you know, as so to get in the moment, he gets that shovel, and he just starts pounding on the grass. You know, just to get you know like what does it feel like to really get there? You know, so that when when I say action, he can come in and like he's he's in it. You know, acting, so, acting. Yeah. So he does this right, and and he does it, and he goes in, and unbeknownst to us, the 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 actress, she wasn't in that scene. So she just casually walks outside, and she sees some guys um, uh, making barbecue outside, and their eyes are like this big around, and <laughs> they just watch him smash the grass, and then they go, "You need to leave that man." <laughs> 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 and then she's like, no, 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 it's a movie. Mm, yeah, uh-huh. Does he hurt you? You know, <laughs> so that was one of those great, uh, they still didn't believe her. Like, she, she kept saying, like, yeah, I don't think something doesn't add up here, you know. <laughs> so that's a, that's a little quick behind the scenes uh, tip. So, Ignacio, tell, tell us about playing a real man, um, you know, a real true story. What is that, what, what was that like as an actor and, and also playing the, the police aspect of it? So I'll answer the first part first, obviously. Um, playing a real person, it's, there's, a, there's a duplicity behind it, right? Because so you get to play this great character that exists, so no one can tell you that whatever you're doing is wrong because this actually happened. That's a beauty of it. Now, the scary part of it is having the man that you're playing watch everything you do for about 18 days straight, constantly. Granted, I, uh, I got to spend a lot of time with Jonathan, and me and Jonathan became very close. I consider Jonathan a very close friend of mine. Um, we spoke a lot about faith, about just existence in general, just being good people, and I learned a lot about him from him, and I got to bring that into the character. And I tried to bring a lot of empathy into, into his cause, because to play a character like Jonathan, you know, you could... You could demonize and villain. You could, you could play the villain very easily, and I think that's a cheap way of telling his story, and it wouldn't do it quite the justice that it deserves. Because at the end of the day, you have to find the humanity behind his actions and why he, how he struggled and how he overcame that obstacle that obviously him and his wife, thank God, willingly did. Um, so it was. Uh, it was interesting. It was exciting. It was scary. But at the end of the day, I, I wouldn't have. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, as to playing a police officer, so that was my first time playing a cop. Um, I grew up with police officers in New York all my life. A lot of my friends are in the NYPD. So there's, uh, there's a few ticks that I took from them. Um, but then most of it was being on set. Once you put the uniform on, it kind of, kind of transforms you, you know? Like you watch your cop shows, you watch your movies, and there's a lot of things that, you know, you can easily do wrong, like holding a gun, for example. That's a very obvious thing. There's a few takes where, you know, I did this thing called teacupping where I held the bottom of the gun, and they were like, no, that's every cop that watches this movie is going to kill you for doing that. <laughs> I was like, okay, I just gotta make sure I get that right a couple times. So luckily they were on top of that, which, you know, made me feel great. But putting the uniform on, it does something. You know, and the one thing that I learned about being a police officer while shooting this film was this inherent fear that you have every day going to work that you have to mask and get used to. You know, you, you wake up in the morning, you go to work, you have your badge, you have your gun, you have these responsibilities, and, and you're put in contact in the line of duty with danger, with circumstance that you quite don't know how to deal with, but you have to make a decision in a split second and all this pressure and somehow you just gotta let it go and just forget about it and just act like a person and hope to God that you make the right decision when the time comes. And so that's uh, the most interesting thing is how law enforcement officers, anybody that's a first responder can take that feeling and suppress it, and it goes back to the whole theme underlying the story, 
right? We have officers that are scared to get help, people that feel that they're weak by showing this vulnerability to talk, to share their emotions. And I hope that this film will help a lot of people feel that it's okay to go and get help, to, to talk about their problems, to know that they're not alone. Hopefully that yes. answers your question. So one of the things about this story, um, as a, me as a director, and Danny and I co-wrote the, the movie, and one of the things about this is that it, it takes a lot of courage to write what he wrote in his book about his life, you know? And to be that brutally honest about, hey, this is what actually happened, that's scary. And I feel like as Christians, we don't usually do that. <laughs> we kind of like tend to sugarcoat it a little bit. And the fact that he had... He went there, you know, he went there and he just told it like it was. And uh, that was a conscious decision that we had to make also in making the film. It's, it, I said, you know, if we don't tell the story like it was, for instance, he became a Christian and he still drank, you know? And, and, and I remember when we wrote the script, somebody read it and they said, well, wait a minute, he can't still be drinking after he becomes a Christian, you know? And it's like, well, that's what happened, you know? Because it's a process, it's a journey, you know? And, and seeing that journey play out lets people understand, look, this isn't like a pill, you know, like that you just take and it's a fairy tale and it all gets better. You made, you, you know, you made decisions and you made um, bad decisions and now you're going to have to like pick up the pieces, you know? So it's a journey and all of that. And I feel like that's what kind of sets this film apart, his story apart, you know, from, um, from other people. And I feel like that's what we were setting out to do is to say, hey, look, we're all human beings. We all make mistakes. And that's what God's there for is to help us pick the pieces back up, you know, and get us get, get, us get on the right track, you know? Um, I have a question for you. Yeah. Did you feel that now that you're doing a faith-based film, did you find that there were any limitations doing a faith-based film in contrast to what would be a secular film? Oh, yeah. Well, there's a lot of limitations. and I mean, honestly, the alcohol was a question, you know. I, I, I wasn't quite sure. I'm, I know that as Christians, we, we try to not watch things that, you know, don't please God, you know. But the thing is that to understand the darkness, you know, to understand, it, it, to understand how bright and shining God is, you have to you have to show how dark the world is, you know, to, to be able to contrast that. Because if if you had a story where he just um, uh, never drank and you know maybe said a curse word and then he becomes a Christian, you're like, well, big whoop de doo, you know, <laughs> like not much happened. But now when you see this, like, man, he went, it went there, it went dark, and and then seeing the redemption makes it so much stronger. Look what God really took this guy from the bottom and, and brought him back out, and it's just amazing. I mean, you see it in a film, but this is a true story, you know, that really happened. Um, so let me pass now to Sterling. So Sterling, tell me, uh, is there anything you learned um, during the making of the film that, um, that maybe you didn't know before? Yeah, well, I mean, the main thing is, I mean, I didn't know um, that first responders were, were dealing with this. You know, I didn't know that it was higher suicide rate. You know, um, you know it was more, um, you know, I guess death from suicide than being out in the field. And, um, you know, just shooting this film just made me respect what law enforcement, what, what you guys do um, day in and day out. Um, even, I wasn't even a real cop, right? <laughs> but just doing everything in just full uniform with the, the belt and the bulletproof vest and, and me, and it, you know, I, was, I felt like I was at football practice, right? Like, <laughs> like seriously, like shooting like six hours in that stuff. Um, and, um, but, you know, just seeing that stuff, you know, every day or, or every other day or whenever, um, I mean, that definitely affects you guys. And I just have so much respect for all first responders. But the thing about this movie, even though, yeah, we really want to, you know, um, you know, I guess push this out to first responders and let you guys know everything is okay. Um, but, you know, this, this movie is potentially just bigger than that. I mean, this is for anybody that's experienced loss, you know, um, you know, things of that nature. So um, I, this movie can go really far, and I'm so glad to be a part of it. So. Awesome. And uh, so Fajardo over here. <laughs> Danny, uh, talk to us about maybe some of the uh, things that you learned and maybe uh, something about the filming. What, what do you want to tell us, or writing? <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, watching it this last time, I just realized how poetic the film was in terms of how like the music and the cinematography and, and all the aspects and stuff like that. And so I really appreciate what you did and what you brought to the table. And I also want to talk 
tell Ignacio, and I know I, I've told you multiple times, you know, but see, like being on set and then working and seeing Ignacio come into character, I've never met an actor that you could go, we're going to do a scene where you have to cry, and he goes, okay, hold on. And he comes back like two seconds later, and it's, and then it's not just one time, it's, uh, it's guys, like, get ready, he's, he's crying already, and he better shoot. <laughs> It, it's not it's not one time it's like five takes in a row and you're like did he just like stab in his eye or something like i i, I just don't know how he does Any, anyway um <laughs> um but also i, I want to say like the bravery of telling your story you guys both it's it's not just you jonathan stacy i mean what people are seeing what real christianity is when they see how you could forgive your husband. You know what I mean? And, and, and Jonathan, man, like both of you guys, the bravery of putting it down so people pick up from it, they can learn from it, you know? And, and I think that's one of the beautiful things about doing this type of film, you know? There's a lot of different lessons in there. You know, hearing, hearing sometimes I smirk when I hear like some of Pastor Gabe's lines, you know, because I'm like, man, he was hard on him. Good, <laughs> he needed that. You know, so that was, that's some of it. Um, I don't know, I ramble a lot. So that's why they give me my glass. <laughs> that was good. Um, so um, Stacy, I know that a lot of, I know that as a lot of women who would see this and know what happened, they, they would have a hard time with the, wait, you forgave him? <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> you know, I would have left, you know. So can, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was not easy. <laughs> Uh, when you've been married for a long, long time, which I would consider a long time. Um, <laughs> 17 years now. Yeah, 17 years. You know what, well, you kind of know what's, what's on your husband's heart. You know what's on your spouse's heart. If they've had a bad day, you know it. If they've had a good day, you know it. And Jonathan was just going through this spiraling downward path and I didn't really put it out there I didn't tell a lot of people about it because I just I don't want to share all of our business <laughs> God's funny <laughs> and you know we I just prayed a lot and I will have to say that women the first question I get is, you, why did you stay with him? And they're angry with me. That's fine. They can be angry. But I knew that his issues had nothing to do with me. It was the past, and he's suppressing and didn't get rid of, didn't deal with trauma from way years before we even met. And you know that as a spouse. You know that there are things that are deep down that you don't want to talk about. And the death of his father was one of those things. And we just had to work that out. And I, I'm a big advocate for going to see faith-based counselors because you gotta be real. You gotta be real. And the scene where um, Ignacio Jonathan's talking to the, the empty chair and he's talking to his dad, I mean, that happened in real life. That was real. That was a double session. And that made me realize, here's this broken man who's carrying almost 30 years of, of shame and guilt from when he was a kid. And then I started thinking about all of my students that, I, that I've had who are just carrying things they shouldn't be carrying. You don't carry that. You give that, to, you give that over. And we just, we had, we had to work that out. And it was a work in progress. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Like there were some days I was pretty PO'd, <laughs> but we had to work on it. What do you want to say? <laughs> so the the scene in the movie um, where the, she's got a laundry basket 
and uh, she's walking through the hallway, and then you know uh, Ignacio or me or you know <laughs> the, the lead character in the movie uh, comes up to his wife and says, you know, oh, well, let me help you with that, and she says, you know, don't touch me. Like, I mean, that that really happened. Like, that's reality. Like, we were in a crisis. We were in a complete storm, and it's it is a miracle that we pulled through, but it's because we turned to God. And because we turned to God and because I had a repentant heart uh, and because she was willing to forgive, I mean, you know, she biblically had every right to walk away from me. Uh, and, and I realized that, that I don't deserve the forgiveness or the grace. But she chose to forgive, and because of that, our marriage is now stronger than it's ever been, bef- ever was before. And we've been given the gift of two um, beautiful children since that time. So now we have three wonderful children. I'm, I don't know if you got to see, you know, at the end there where, you know, there's the baby and everything. But um, we're just so blessed to have the redemption that we have. And, it's, and it, it definitely took a lot of work. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just because of the forgiveness. Tim. Uh, so how was it working and collaborating with all these actors and, and doing this? This is your first debut film, so just wanted to... Yes, this is my uh, first feature film. I've done, you know, a lot of filming, obviously, before, but dealing with the actors. Okay, where do we start? Hmm. <laughs> Let's start with Dean Cain. Uh, you know, he used to be Superman. You know, as, you, as many of you know, he used to be Superman. What's he like? He's awesome. You know, he's a, he's a class act. He shows up, very professional, super fun person, makes the set very, you know, uh, very fun. And obviously, it's hard to work with him because everybody wants pictures with him. So <laughs> that makes it tough. Um, and working with Ignacio here, uh, I'll pass on the question. And then, and then uh, working with, <laughs> uh, no, Ignacio, um, you know, every time I work with actors, I learn a lot, you know, from the craft uh, about filmmaking. Um, I had a chance to work with Dean Kane in the past, and I remember first working with him, how much I learned just by watching him and what he did and the choices he made. And I feel like working with Ignacio was, I mean, first of all, he could read my mind. It was crazy. I mean, it would, I mean, there were moments there that you see in the film. I mean, he's in that state, you know, and, and, and it, it looks easy when you see it, but, you know, in real life when you're there and, um, you know, there's people watching you, you know, and there's lights and, and it's like, okay, dude, I need you to go, you know, I need to, I need you to go here, you know, and he, when he goes there, it's, it's, um, it, it gives you goosebumps. You're watching it and, and it's like, a, it's a dance, you know, and he's dancing and I'm dancing and we both are dancing the same song. And it, it was so, it, it, for me, it was such a beautiful experience to work with a great collaborator like, like Ignacio and, and, a, a, he, like what he's saying about the crying is totally true. I have never met anybody in my entire life can just be like, I need you to cry. Okay, go. What? Wait, no, not now. <laughs> I'm not even set up. You know, that happened a lot, actually. Um, but anyway, and then um, working with Sterling, man, that guy's grumpy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, he was great. Uh, he's, he's a trooper, man. He, they were wearing, it was hot. They're wearing these, um, you know, it, it doesn't look like much, but man, it's heavy. All that gear they have on, which by the way, you don't, one of the things you don't know because you're not cops is that to go to the bathroom is like a process. It's like they have to take a bunch of stuff off. I mean, it takes like, you know, it takes a while. So anyway, so I had Mr. <laughs> Sterling over here. Um, uh, he, you know, there's that scene where they're at the junkyard and they had to get out of the car and you hear the gunshots, you know, and Sterling has to get out and like, and like bend down. And I'm like, okay, do it again. Okay, do it again. Okay, do it again. He's like, I feel like I'm at football practice. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was, anyway, he was a trooper. He, 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 you know, he, he went with it, you know, um, what's that? Oh, oh yeah. So by the way, Christian is not here because she is at, um, Miss USA, uh, pageant, uh, for West Virginia the West Virginia pageant. So she would have made it had the, you know, had it not been today, literally. Um, but Christian was amazing too. I mean, she, her perspective, she, she did talk to Stacy and, um, and, and they, you know, they talked about, and one of the things that she would like for me, with me telling you guys is that she did, she was one of the persons who asked Stacy, Hey, like, how could you do that? You know, how could you really do that? You know? And, and it was, uh, I, I feel like one of those things that you, you, 
Usually, you know, if you do a film, if you're just doing a, you know, I don't know, a comic book movie or something, you're not going to be affected, you know, by your character and all that. But when you're doing this, she, all of us were genuinely affected by their life stories and by what really happened, you know. And here we are acting out the scenes that actually happened. And it was, it, it was, um, it, it, it's hard to describe, you know. I mean, I know there were scenes where, uh, for example, when he's talking to the chair, in the other room, you know, I call cut, and this guy's bawling. I mean, bawling. I mean, bawling, you know, in the other room, you know. And um, it, I know it was very hard for them to, you know, to go through that. But, yeah, it was, it, I learned so much from these guys, especially um, this one right here. <laughs> well, back to, back to Christian. She's a very generous actress. She, she gives you more than she needs to, you know. So there was takes where... You know, obviously when you have the camera set up, you have different angles and you have different coverage. So when you're shooting her coverage, I will be there giving her line, my lines for her to react off of and she does the same. And she would give me the same 300% amped up performance for my coverage every time. And she was really kind about that. Very sweet, very generous. She's very smart. She's written books. She's won awards. She's, she's, she's really going places. And... Uh, it's funny because she just kind of fell into acting, right? It wasn't yeah. kind of like one of those things that yeah, she she's wants a to pursue. She's a natural. She's yeah. very good. She's very, very talented. So, um, Hickory, can you talk a little bit about um, first responders and the mental health aspect, you know? Sure. So one of the things that Sterling mentioned earlier is the police suicides. And, uh, you know, this actually is a police officer. I've been a police officer for 18 years, and I had no idea for many, many years of my career that police suicide and firefighter suicide was such a problem. Um, more officers, more first responders die at their own hand, taking their own life than in the line of duty. And that's just flooring. But I understand it now, you know, and now I think that I know why I was called to write this book and tell my story, because there's so many first responders out there, uh, officers, firefighters, you know, EMS, dispatchers, that, that uh, have this heavy burden, uh, vicarious trauma, the trauma of others every day, compounded with the trauma in their own lives. I mean, certainly Stacy and I had lots of trauma in our life with the loss of our son, and then I had the loss of my father. You know, so trauma doesn't care if you're wearing a uniform or not. Trauma is trauma. And if you don't resolve it, if you don't face it in healthy ways, it will destroy your life. So uh, now, just for a couple minutes, we'd like to open the floor. If you guys have any questions or anything, we'd love to uh, answer if you guys have any questions. So just, I guess, raise your hand and we'll call you. No questions? Okay, good. We're all good to go. <laughs> yes, sir. Where was it filmed? Yes, it was. Uh, go ahead. You do it. So the film was, or the movie was filmed, the film was filmed in uh, West Virginia, um, Bridgeport, West Virginia primarily, also Shinston, West Virginia, and Clarksburg, West Virginia. That's mostly because our, uh, you know, it's easier to get police department collaboration, you know, because obviously, as you can see, all those cars are real, all those uniforms are real. <laughs> first, day, first day of me showing up right before filming is like, okay, let's go look at the uniforms, and then we walk into the police station, and we go upstairs, and there's the police uniforms. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you take any of them. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, so all of it is authentic, real. That's, you know, it's all, um, you know, yeah. I saw somebody over here, yeah. Okay, so the question was, uh, we've learned, we lived it, Stacy and I lived it, uh, I wrote about it, um, and, now, and then we made it to a movie, and, and what's that been like to, to kind of be living in that process, is that correct? Okay, so um, I think for me, it was just a sense of uh, God laying it on my heart, you know, uh, I started attending a men's Bible study as part of my healing and recovery process, and they prayed me through all this stuff through the me not wanting to tell my wife you know what I my sins against her through the crisis we went through and through the restoration and and uh, and the birth of our son and and now you know um, our newest daughter hope and you know there was a brother in my men's group and these guys are just you know they we pray over each other's lives and we do life together and there was a brother that that prayed me through all this stuff and and his name is Cornell Smith and he said, you know, like, hey, brother, I think you, I feel like you're going to write a book, you know, and I'm like, whatever, dude, like, I feel like you're smoking crack, because, you know, 
I'm a cop. I don't know if you noticed or not, but like we put the least amount of pen to paper as possible. We hate writing reports. And when we do write reports, we're supposed to just keep it to the facts. So the creative aspect is left out of it. We, they don't want our opinion or anything in the reports um, because that can show bias and things like that. So we just report the facts. But, you know, God really laid it on my heart when he spoke those words. And so I just felt like it was a calling on my life. I didn't understand why I was doing it. I didn't know about the police suicides. I thought I was the only one. I thought that I was weak somehow. You know, I thought that I was, there was something wrong with me, that I was struggling with all the scenes, you know, on duty, all the flashbacks and the nightmares. You know, I, I was convinced it was just me. But I, I was obedient, and I wrote the book not understanding why, and then God started to use it. And our prayer from the beginning has been, that God would be glorified through the telling of this story. And we tried to pursue making it a movie once the, the book came out, and it wasn't going anywhere. Uh, I even reached out to Sony Affirm Films, and they said, yeah, you know, we don't really just make b movies out of books, so, like, go do it yourself. <laughs> but God opened the door to make it happen. We started praying that if God wanted to use the story in that way, that he would do it, and he did it. We didn't have to do anything. We just followed his lead. So to, to live this, you know, it's, it's amazing because we get to, you know, officers come to me all the time behind the scenes, and officer wives come to Stacy behind the scenes saying, this is our life too. You know, they don't want to be loud and proud about it, and I get that. You know, it's very private stuff. But um, there's so many uh, first responders out there that are suffering in silence, and, and so it's really going to help them. It's amazing. Did you want to add anything to that? Ditto. Ditto, she says. Thank you. Great question. Hey, Brother Johnson, uh, you, you should, like I said, you shared your, your story with us. You shared it with the church as well. Uh, but what about with your, I have two questions. Will you, will you, have you or will you allow your children to see this film? Or what to read the book? Yeah, so, so uh, what's the other question? So the first question is, um, you know, will you allow your children to see this film and read the book and stuff like that? Um, and, and to answer that question, um, you know, my daughter, uh, our daughter Anna is only 11. And, you know, of course, Zachariah's four and a half and um, Hope is only a year. But, you know, when the time is right, you know, absolutely. I don't think it's right to hide it from them. I think they need to know that this is part of their parents' story and how they came to be <laughs> for some of them. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, we're going to be truthful with them about it, um, but we're going to make sure that they're mature and ready enough for, to receive it. His daughter's in the movie, actually. She's the one where, uh, at, the, at the beginning, where mom is telling him that dad is sick and that he's, he's not going to make it. The little girl there that's got the tears, amazing performance, that's his daughter. <laughs> and uh, she did amazing. She was phenomenal, yeah. And Hickory is actually in the movie a lot more than you think he is. So uh, he's, I think, I don't know, he's probably five? Uh, yeah, he's in, I know you've probably spotted him in the ice cream scene, but he's also the fireman. Um, so that was one of the things. And uh, I always he's at to the bar. He's, you can see his back. He's, he's at the bar. And, uh, and he was the dead body with no shoes. So yeah, oh, okay, I guess this is not funny. But <laughs> so uh, the other part of that question was, uh, where do you see the film going from here? Is that correct? Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it, it, we have signed with a distributor, uh, and so within the next, you know, probably end of the summer, early fall, it should be coming out on all your favorite streaming platforms as well as DVD and Blu-ray. But in the meantime, we're going to continue to use it as a ministry to tool in churches whenever we can. Yeah. Just, just want to add on to that and, and brag on God, um, because this film has been out now, and we put it into film festivals and. It's won five Best Inspirational Film Awards at different film festivals. And, oh, six, six, okay. Um, and you know, two for Best Actor for, you know, for Ignacio. And one for um, Best Debut Director, you know. You know, so the film has been places I haven't been to. You know, it's, it went to India, Prague, Paris, you know, London, Vegas. Uh, I've been there. <laughs> I've been there before when I wasn't a Christian. It wasn't that good. A a anyway. Okay, any more questions? I didn't look up high. Is there anybody? Up there? Okay. Oh, we got one more. Okay. How did the two of you find the director? 
That's a story in itself. Would you like to tell that one, Tim? Sure. Uh, so I had I was working on a film with Dean Cain, and um, I, uh, I, I was a little bummed because I was directing it, and I didn't get to talk to him very much because I'm working. And, uh, and I had prayed, you know, God... Open the door for me to be able to talk to this guy. You know, he's legit, you know. And uh, anyway, I didn't, we got done filming and he left and I didn't hear anything from him again. Six months later, this producer calls me up and he says, hey, I talked to Dean Kane. Dean Kane said, I need to talk to you that you would make a good film for me. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you know. So, uh, so I said, uh, okay, you know. And then he, and then he tells me, you know, he's got this break every chain movie. And I said, well, that sounds exactly like the kind of movie I'd want to make. You know, uh, it's it's a real story, you know, with um, real emotions, and um, and it's not like sugar coated. You know, it's it, and it's and it helps people, and it's a great cause. You know. And I said, like, sign me up. You know. So it was totally God is actually the answer. <laughs> to add to that, though, real quick. Um, they also took a, they, there was another script for it. They completely rewrote it in about a week because we had to get it done for the film schedule that we had coming up. And like they hit it, a home run out of the park, took it where it needed to be in, in a week. I mean, it's, it's unheard of. Uh, so God's had his hand on the whole thing, you know, it, it's just amazing. There's no question um, that God has been part of the process. You know, it was it's one of those things where you're working in it, and then sometimes you get to the other end, and you're like, oh, that was God helping us. Okay, I see that huge pitfall that I didn't fall into. He actually steered me away, and I didn't realize it until right now. You know, <laughs> I mean, for me, like, there's a couple things. So, like, for instance, um, if you remember, there's a scene where he delivers the, the news to the motorcycle family. And, you know, there's this shot where the windows, and, um, and you see the people, and you see him, and he's kind of, like, center-framed, you know, and it's kind of, like, orangey. I had imagined that exactly like it was, you know, and I, and I storyboarded it exactly like it was. And we get there, and I see the house, and I'm just, and I just said, thank you, Lord. You gave me the house I wanted. Like, out of all the houses in, in West Virginia, there aren't very many houses that have that, you know, big space that you can film like that nowadays, you know? So it was, it, that's just one tiny example, but there were, it was just countless examples, that, you know, of, of that happening. I think, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the question was, will you share your story about um, when you went to Tempe, Phoenix, Arizona, and we had the world premiere there. And uh, just a, a very quick snippet of a story is that I had just arrived and I'm like, whoa, I've never been to Arizona before and there's palm trees and that's weird. And it's really hot. And um, I was um, I went to go get some breakfast. And I was like, well, Starbucks, because that's what I know. Uh, but then I saw a Einstein's Bagels or something like that. I'm like, oh, that sounds good. Let me go there. And I pulled in and, uh, you know, saw two guys uh, sitting, having, like, coffee together at a table. And I'm like, well, that's weird. They look kind of like tough guys, and it's weird that they're sitting at that tiny table. And then I walked right past them. I, I went in and I got my, my coffee and stuff. I came back out, and one of them is a fully uniformed police officer, and the other one uh, had a gun on, too. He was a detective, and for some reason, I never noticed that. Uh, I think it was because He's of, a cop, too, you know, yeah. so... <laughs> All the palm trees, you know, <laughs> and the, the new bagel place, you know. But uh, I, I was like, well, I, I need to tell these guys, like, maybe they're local, like, about this premiere. And I went to go speak to them, and, like, it turns out that uh, it was the deputy chief of the department for a huge, huge Tempe police department, it's huge. And um, so like, you know, he had a lot of influence in his department and he asked me to email him the details and, you know, just a God opened the door for me to be able to meet those guys in that moment. Well, thank you guys. We really enjoyed you guys seeing the film. Thank you so much for coming out. We really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you guys. And we'll be out back in the lobby if you want to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you. We say thank you. Oh, I'm not losing hope.